I am unashamed. What about you? I have so many conversations with my mom. When she's just talking, and I'm working, and she's going over here wide open. And all she needs from me about every 10 minutes is a hmm. Or yeah, just yeah. an acknowledgement because yeah. 10 minutes goes by. I got to where I just cut her, cut her off and shut her down. <laughs> yeah, I just let her go. And I, I'm working, doing my own stuff. You know, it's, it's no I big deal. I think some of it's guilt. You know, I told her, I told her what's talked to buy because she's like, well, how come you're not? You know, I was like, hey. Sharing your stock here's one, secrets. Here's one. Buy this right now and you'll make a lot of money. <laughs> well, she never did. Guess what? If she'd have bought it a month ago, whatever she put in, <laughs> She'd have twice as much, but didn't happen. Didn't happen. So she feels guilty, and she's like, "Oh, he's just, you know, <laughs> it's somehow or another that's my fault. <laughs> you didn't pull the trigger. That's right. I said, here, right here, that's, call him up. That's Do mom. it. She's out in. Uh, so mom is in. So dad, you had an appearance. You went to uh, North Carolina. Yep. With the with the grams, tell us about that. Because mom stayed, you know, she didn't come back with you, which is yeah. classic mom. Some of the finest people on the earth, I would say. Yeah. Where were you at? The, the Graham crowd. He was at the uh, Billy Graham Library. Was Billy it the Graham library? library. Oh, really? You uh, spoke. Yeah, I spoke. It was like a virtual event. Did people have? Oh, you I were mean there, at were, the there were some people there. I didn't even realize that uh, they were feminine, and I was, I was. I thought I was talking to about four or five hundred. Me not being a computer person, I said, "Well, got a good crowd here," but I didn't realize there was a hundred and forty something thousand that, that clicked on. You know, I'm not a computer man, so I don't know who I'm talking to. Yeah. I just thought it was a little crowd of guys over in North yeah. Carolina. But I'm I glad now. I'm fired. glad now they didn't say. Now remember, you're speaking yeah. to you know, you know, you're getting up there about you know, toward a quarter of a million people here let's would it have mattered no nah. would it have changed anything you said no but see i i don't think it's just because you're not a computer man because i did i had an event my first one the with real people since yeah, the coronavirus too. i was in longview texas and the, i think the governor put a limit of 200 people i get because that's about how many were there but I, they had asked me if they could stream it to, you know, right. to more, right? And because uh, they, they were like, this thing sold out in a week. Uh, typically, we don't <laughs> allow that because you're trying to get people to an event. But with this crazy corona, you know, yeah, yeah, and you don't, you know, not to say people would I've be sort of, up I've, to mischief, but sometimes they'll say we'll stream it. Yeah, and then they'll. But then they're just taping it and they try to do whatever. I've so. I've, I've, I've trained myself. To uh, to presenting things from the Bible, whether there's two sitting there, one, two, or three, or three million, I've just trained myself to speak the word of God with equal enthusiasm. Right. Whether it's large or small, it, your message really doesn't change no, based on the on on, on how many. Right? Yeah, me. Or, listen yeah. to me. Look, I, ten. Okay, great. Let's right. go with it. Yeah. But it's the same. Right. I mean, I'm as fired up talking to the ten as I am. Or, if the, it was, or the one. Or, or the one. Just with them. I or was as excited. I And they were, t the energy, because this was an all-men's event, the energy in there was spectacular because everybody wanted to, you know, everybody misses getting together. Right. And so, because I kind of looked around and thought, this is weird because it was this, a lot of people, no mask. <laughs> yeah. Now we, you know, I don't know. I when because I, I had my mask in my hand when I was walked in. I thought I don't guess we're wearing masks. You might could, but, uh, uh, you might could work in what I've done. See, no matter where you go now, I walked up the other day, you know, and to the doctor, to the doctor. They, they, you know, I, I give blood. They take blood out of me. I got too much blood. They say. So I give them a <laughs> pint or two. They so say, about every six, eight months, I go say. up there and say, all right, get a pint. Do they give you money for the blood? Uh, they can't sell this kind of blood. Oh, they, really? they, 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 they discard it. In Europe, they can sell it, so I'd be making a lot of money there. But over <laughs> here in the States, they don't give people. people well, wait a minute. How do you know that? How, how do you but know if you, that? If there's well, a man it's, and... it's like I said, who's to say <laughs> how much blood I'm supposed to have? And the guy, the oncology guy, he said, 
research, I said, correct me if I'm wrong, people in the Himalayas <laughs> and the Eskimos, they have more blood than we do, more blood in their bodies. Because it's colder? Colder, higher, higher elevation. And I told him, man, he said, Well, how'd you get that? Um, that it, this is the hottest place on the earth. And the well, flattest place. Well, what he point. said when I said Eskimos have more blood than normal people and, and Himalaya people live, live in the Himalayas. I said, I said, So who's to say? And he said, Your problem is you're not an Eskimo <laughs> and you don't live in the Himalayas. <laughs> I said, It's a fair point. I said, But well, what about this? Well, wait a minute. A little me... gasoline engine has. Smaller, the dipstick is not as tall. I said, there's not as much oil because it's a small motor. Yeah. I said, a little gasoline motor, see? I said, you got that, but then you have diesel motors. Yeah. What if I'm kind of like a diesel motor <laughs> that has more oil, I have more blood than a smaller engine? And he's looking at me, you know, and he said, it doesn't work like that. So I why couldn't, not? I, I think that talk, makes perfect sense well, to me. That's, that's well, why you two are not doctors. I would but, love to hear this guy's conversation about what dad well, tells Wait a minute now. When did this come on where you have too much? How do you find well, out that you have too much blood? I had a kidney stone, and during the process, Process of tracking down the kidney stone. The guy said, "said Phil, you, you have too much blood." I said, "Do what? Do you he see said, you this on a graph?" I said, "I said, who came up with how much you're supposed to have?" I said, "What is it, like an oil level in a car? Everybody's supposed to have the same amount." It's because it's too I many said, red blood cells, so it thickens it. So the problem is for Dad, he when Wayne discovered it, he's and that's why he sent him to the oncologist. It it increases your chance of stroke and heart attack by about 40% because you got way no, thicker. Actually, actually, it's 13%. Oh, is that what it is? 13? 13%. I said, 13%. That's I not said, much. Doc, I said, 87% of them, good to go with too much blood. So I finally got down to, you're trying to tell me that a 500-pound man and a 90-pound girl, they're supposed to have the same amount of blood? I said, I, I, I'm not getting it. So I still Are they supposed to have the same amount? So, but the bottom line was, he just said, well, it is a l- slightly amount. higher risk of a stroke if you have too much blood. That's the only thing we know. I said, so well, they've I, been taking I blood out. They've they just been taking it out. Right, well, I, got one. I know we're not supposed oh, to. So I go to him, they <laughs> say, well, you're sitting on about 50. I'm like, what's it supposed to be? He said, 45. I'm like. Close it, enough. I said, if you take out a, that's what I was thinking. I said, well, so if you take out a pint, how much does it go down? He said, you get down at about 47. And he said, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll just take another pint, and that'll drop you below where you're supposed to be. There's like a number. And, I wouldn't do that. And in six months' <laughs> time, look, if six you, months let's time just say, it'll come back. Let's say you get in a fight, and you get cut. <laughs> it would actually take you longer to bleed to death than a normal person. <laughs> I thought it was just more blood... <laughs> More get up and go. I'm 74. I'm like, well, I got a little oh extra goodness. blood there. Well, am I not right? Go that though? extra mile. Wouldn't it? Well, it I'm is. just telling you what the man said. I, he said, I guess all human beings, so you were check, t- and everybody's got a level that they call 45. I don't know, 45, whatever. He used some big words on both sides of it. But, but here's what I can't figure out. If you are if you go, they have a blood drive at our church about once every couple months, yep. and they pay you. I can't right? give that. No, you don't. They don't pay. You. Oh, it's no. Pay. It's free. They give I'm not you a, allowed. To, okay, you get a little. Back up you then. get a little, Debbie. You you can pay if you give plasma at the plasma place, but not just blood. Don't they don't pay? That's, oh, they that's don't a pay donation. For that anymore? No, it's a donation. I can't give blood. You get a little. Didn't they used to? What I happened to the guy? I remember he said like, he gave blood because he was well. You can money. give. You can give plasma. What's which, the difference in plasma? Well, plasma and blood? is the product in your blood that they take out. Your blood is made up, plasma's in there, so they just totally screen that off. Plasma has a lot of different. So you were telling about the uh, mass. You got you lost your way there. So what was the? You started that story with something about a mask. You, well, you went to the doctor. When I happened? walk in there, you know, they allow me after they watched when I would go in there. Well, the people who are in there with all the social distance and all this stuff. They all want they, a lot of them want autographs, and, and they was you're a celebrity. You should well, have said social distancing. I was just distancing. I had to get in the uh, thing, so I get up in there. So now I just walk through, and they got a little room back in the clinic somewhere. They they went back in there, so they sit me in a little room by myself, right? So the people are not 
yeah. coming up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it was COVID. But she said, you know, you need to have a mask in here, Mr. Robinson. And I just reached up. I went, I said, I got one. <laughs> and she, she just looked at me. <laughs> so she said, well, okay. And you've been wearing that for years. So Little you did the, you know that you were the most prepared <laughs> man on the planet. It was right there. Your Here's mask. what I think. Here's what I think. I'll go beyond that. I think one of the attributes, the positive things about a male is that he has the wherewithal. Yeah. See these? Think about it. I, this I this is this. a mask. That's what I said. I'm saying the coronavirus is blowing, but look, my 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 nose is pretty well covered because I don't ever trim it, you know. You say, well, it's hanging. You can't even. You barely can see my bottom lip, but you can't see my upper. Mm -hmm. This is protecting my nose. It's catching things like microbes before they enter my nostrils and my mouth. I'm, I'm, yeah. I really believe it. It's really a catch all. Uh, it's well, a catch all. Is it may so catch and hold though? Uh, if somebody walked by and they had, uh, you know, what droplet, droplets. But if those droplets hit on these whiskers, I mean, it just looks like to me it's well, we helping. Need to do some research. I, I, I'd love to hear the How many on that. people? I, I'm saying it's a barrier to a certain degree of microbes and anything else that might. I told you about so the study. Point, I told you about the study that says I may be dead wrong. Your beards are holding more microbes than a dog's coat. But Al, as long as they stay right here. Yeah, but you touch it, then you touch your nose or your eye or whatever, and then there it goes. I well, mean, how, that's long, my theory. how long is it going to stay there, the micro? Forever? No, it, it dies in about 30 minutes, I think. But, so uh, I don't know. Yeah, it, it, it'd be dead. I don't know. I'm sure we're going to hear All from, I know is I, I, I haven't caught the virus yet. Well, that's Can we not and see I have whiskers, some... and I'm thinking, you know, maybe they said, well, pull a mask down. But look, if you pull, pull the mask down, you know, there's a lot of things microbes have to go through to go go through your your mask. This is to me, this is a mask. Well, what if your mask what if your the mask you're putting on already contains micro? Because people don't yeah, they you're keep supposed wearing to be the washing mask. them right. You gotta you really gotta replace them and wash them and all I, I just look I was my trip. I mean, I'm I not a doctor. I'm just saying this <laughs> seems play in my on mind TV. this would help some I agree if you have that. a covering over your lips, I don't know. And I know it's a lot better for with sun and winter. I, I do it's know this. It's warmer in the winter, it's cooler in the summer, so Well, obviously you're a proponent cuz you've had one for for 40 years. Yeah. I mean, so so the whole thing about some doctor may say he's some redneck <laughs> idiot with whiskers thinks that's going to help. I just like to see the stats. How many people who had the coronavirus had a full? Now I don't mean a little psychiatric like to, beard. I, I would like to or know a these starter stats. beard. I had four hair sticking out. I'm talking about full developed. Well, beard. you may be like that guy on the guy co commercial, whatever that old guy. Then he was so proud. He had just a few sprigs, you know. <laughs> but like most of these girls, they they whatever little sprigs they have, they pull them out, so they leave nothing. But he just said he was proud of his beard, and some guy was looking at him. He said, "Do you even know what a beard is?" Because he <laughs> he had a little old yeah yeah growth about like that. <laughs> see what I'm saying? Oh yeah, <clears throat> I haven't seen that. Yes. Where, do you, where do you see this stuff? At? He watches a lot of TV. Okay. So there's, yeah, and, and now, Dad, you guys wouldn't know this because you wouldn't be looking into these, uh, what's out there now, but they've got whole now companies that make these different kind of shavers and or you, you, they call it manscaping where they can get the hair down to just, you know, even just where it just comes out and keep it there. I mean, there's like a whole, they call it a beard, but. I mean, I don't. It's not even hard. Well, stuff. we'll cover it when we get into John John eleven. If we there. ever get there, <laughs> yeah. we'll get there. We'll get look, into John eleven. People. I'll make some comments, and you'll say, "Huh." <laughs> now, I, I understand now where he's coming from, as far as uh, what happens, and I'll I'll use biblical terminology here of what happens when this tent wears out. When All this right. tent. Well, let's let's take a break. So would both of you agree that uh, one of the tenets of living the American dream is owning land? If you're blessed to be able to own some land, that's... It's I mean, biblical. it's a great thing. You it's think biblical. about it. I it mean, is. it is. And when you came down here, Dad, and 
we hunted this property over here. We leased it from time to time or other people, but I don't think any of us ever dreamed far and away that we would own, you know, as a family, thousands of acres. I told Phyllis who was with me yesterday to an area. I told her, I said, I walked through these woods. The last time I walked through them was about mid seventies. I said, it's been, it's been 50 years. Yeah. I said, as I walked through them, I said, I looked around and I said, man, I would love to have this property. Yeah. I said, I'm driving through it now with you, Phyllis, and I do have it. That's right. I said, me and them boys of mine. Which is a great blessing. So you guys, you both are going to love uh, one of our new sponsors. Um, it's a group in Texas called Capital Ranch Real Estate. And um, it, they call it ranchrealestate.com is their, is their website. Uh, but I talked to Cody, who's the owner, and basically that's all he does is helps people buy and sell ranches in Texas. And uh, that he's a he's a podcast listener, a fan of a, our show, and, and was a fan of Duck Dynasty. But that he said you know, they've been in business since 2011, and that's all he does. Because you know everybody in Texas is like you know people in Texas love Texas, but even people love to go there from yeah. some other place. It's, sure it's that spirit of that wide open. So I love talking to him. They got uh, a better tax code too. That's right. No personal income tax. I mean, so which is really good. I'll, they just have sales tax. So we want you to check these guys out. If you're looking at all, if you're in Texas, of course, but even if you're outside Texas, they might maybe buying a ranch there. Uh, check these guys out. Uh, they would love to help you. Basically, you can call them at 855-968-1200. That's 855-968-1200. Or you can go to their website, which is ranchrealestate.com. All one word, ranchrealestate.com. So get out of the subdivision and get you some land in Texas. And I want to tell you a little bit about my appearance because it, it really, to me, mine was a little bit different because I flew there. It was in downtown Nashville. And so my experience was different in the sense of kind of what's going on out there because, you know, there have been some, I think there's been like a, some spikes in Tennessee and Nashville in particular. So the mayor of Nashville is like, from the people that were there telling me that it's like big time crackdown. You have to have a mask on outside anywhere. If you get fined, I mean, like there's people getting fined. It's it's you know they're they're taking it super serious. I just read it myself to where I could just reach up and get the hat, All right. the <coughs> hair band, which probably wouldn't work in where I was. But anyway, it was interesting because so we come in the event, so I'm putting the mask on. They've already like prepared me, you know. So we walk in. Well, they this room was supposed to hold about they had 500 people supposed to be there for this thing I was speaking at. So because of the mayor, <coughs> their numbers now they could only have 25 people in the room. I mean, it's a big, huge room, about the size of our fellowship center or your place on Sunday. <clears throat> 25 people, and they're spread out, you know, at these little tables. It's like but four they're people. streaming it? They're streaming it. So it was all going out. So it was a big celebration for the thing. So it was really weird because, oh, and your buddy was there doing the worship uh, guy, you know, Gary Chapman. Really? Yeah. He said he, he, said he knows you and Missy well. Oh, he does well. well. Yeah. yeah. So he, he did the, <clears throat> the worship for it. He did like three songs. Oh, he, He's awesome. Yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah. So his wife, first time I'd my, ever met him, is my metal detecting treasure expert. If I find, is she a singer too? She sings. Oh, okay. I just you didn't know, know it because her name looked familiar. But. One one night they were at our house and they started singing something, you know, Missy, and that they, right. were, and it just sounded like, you know, I thought, well, this is it. Jesus is coming back. It was beautiful. But then I was like. Should I hum along? <laughs> I was the odd, I was the odd man out. We but, did. He did a song uh, Saturday night. It was called "What I Know," and it was a really good. He wrote it, and it was just this about. This guy has produced. <coughs> oh yeah, multiple, multiple. You know, winners. He's what well, on all a big of our deal, case. So. Nearly, uh, at least my case. We are baptizing a lot of people. You know, like last in the last ten days. Probably seventy five or eighty, and they just keep coming from here, there, and under, from all over the United States, wherever. So we, I, I'm at close contact with human beings then, but I found myself in a position where I haven't been to like a restaurant, a right. local restaurant, a a Walmart, a sporting goods store, well, that's- or no <laughs> shop. I don't I don't do those because there's it's, there's always a little disruption. Well, that's why I no matter you, where so I try. So I just this whole situation this weekend first just flying there because now you got to have mask on the whole time you're in the airport, 
over your nose and mouth. I mean, people come by, you know, pull it up. I mean, I don't go anywhere, so I don't need that. So then I get there the other day coming home, and they're like, oh, now that mask is unacceptable because it had a – so it's just – what I'm saying is it was a a weird experience for me because the whole time I'm worried about the mask. I walk in, there's a guy there taking our temperature – when you walk in, there's only 25 of us there. So everybody got their temperature. I guess that was part of the rule. So this guy's there. He's taking everybody. Saying, okay, you're good to go. Good to go. By good the way, go. Al, you're on John chapter 11 about Lazarus. And I said I'll throw in a few verses there on that. But, but unfortunately, I think what's driving this whole thing about the mask <clears throat> and about the social distancing and all these things they're talking about, you know what? It's what's driving it? Fear. Yeah. They're afraid, Al. I mean, if they were children of the resurrection, I'm telling you, they would not be afraid. I agree. And it makes for a really... They don't realize that, but I'm just looking at how they're behaving. They're scared to death. So we go in this thing, and people like are ta- standing around talking, and you know, you're trying to talk. You can't hear what somebody's saying. And oh. So finally, people just start dropping the mask so they can yeah. have a conversation. And then some here comes some Karen, you know, some woman coming Listen. through. Everybody, you know, and then they get up and make an announcement. Now, think about it. We brothers. got 25 people. Yeah. Just standing around talking, then they get up and make an announcement. You, you know, everybody's got to put. When your I'm mind. with it the brothers, look, weird, the they mask. walk up to me, and here's the way it sounds. Uh, of course, you think about it. I'm my hearing gunfire, <laughs> so much gunfire for the last 50, 60 years. Shotguns, boom, 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 bow, bow, bow. We're aware hearing protection and all that, but still. <laughs> but they come up, and it's here's what it sounds like to me. They say. I mean, I'm like, what? I mean, they're hard enough to hear, but when they go to go to a muffled speaking through okay. some cloth, I'm like, you know, Let I don't even know what they're saying. Let me give you a positive thing. Now, I know this is lowbrow humor, but I'm going to tell you what happened. We went to Montana, and when I fly on a plane, because I want to I try to give something positive over, over the mask. All right. I found, Good, because I found it one was a thing. Bad There's one. Explain, explain one little statement. Low brow. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm giving you what happened. What did you say? Low brow? Low humor. brow humor. Low brow I'm going to give you some low brow humor. <laughs> As opposed to high brow. <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to, I'm, tra- I'm trying to figure Once out. Once you the hear <laughs> the punchline, you will understand. But we've gone down this road and I'm going down it right now. I've made a decision. <laughs> When I fly on planes, I experience a lot of intestinal discomfort. Oh, okay. Nothing, nothing that makes me have to run to the bathroom. I just, you're I a little get, nervous. I, I get gassy. Yeah. And so, is that the low we, brow humor? We're getting there. <laughs> All right. So we go to Montana. That's the introduction of low. We brow. go to Montana. They said, "Okay, we get in the car," and I'm with my wife and kids. You know, I'm trying to be uh, thoughtful. And we can't get into the house because the check-in's at four. Well, let's go to the grocery store. So we're going down the aisle. I'm standing there with you know, Mia, Missy, and Mia, and Karina. And a pain hit me. <laughs> now, And this, you're not on an airplane. No, but that's but been what on caused. It. <laughs> it created a bit of a bomb. And we all have masks on, and I thought, well, wait have a Have you minute. checked into your food intake and what type of food you've been eating it's before you get on it? elevation. It's the it's air pressure that air does pressure. it. At least it gets the same thing. And so, look, I thought, well, wait a minute. But she can't hold it on Now, here was my theory. People with the coronavirus, they can't smell or taste. Everybody else has a mask on, yeah. and I'm standing here in pain. I said, you know what? <laughs> this is perfect. And I was hoping it would be silent, but let me tell you, <laughs> it was an owl r- rattling, no mistake. Well, when I did it, everyone on that aisle looked at me, including my family. <laughs> and Missy turned right around. It's just like you shot over their head. <laughs> so this guy who we don't know says, what'd you do, step on a duck? <laughs> I said, well... That's a good thing about having masks. <laughs> and the people who have the coronavirus can't smell it anyway. So we're good. The only so one that So you just laughed, made a pronouncement on the aisle. I, pronounced- I now have figured out what lowbrow humor is all about. <laughs> now you get it, don't you? <laughs> yeah. I thought you would like that. Well, since- That's, that just happened. So now I've been thinking, you know what? If I'm in a store or whatever, because now since that's happened, since I broke the ice, 
I ain't worried about well, it. Well, since we since we've gone there, since we're there at Lowbrow, I want to give an update. So I mentioned last podcast that I was gonna have a colon scope, which I had done this last week. What they see? Here, here's what here's what happens. You forget how miserable that is. It was no. five years ago. No. No, I, 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 I must have forgotten. I didn't forget. <laughs> because you start at 5 p.m., you drink this stuff, and then you drink some water right behind it. And within 15 minutes, what Jay's described, but way worse, because it's just, it's okay. it's basically you're pooping water. Yeah. But I figured out what my hours. problem is. Because look, it's the only time well, you have bowel troubles when oh they say, goodness. we're going to look at your bowel. Al, Al has cramping. just diagnosed what I think my problem is. Cause look, they they said you'll you'll have fifteen minutes. When I took a sip of that, I was like this in setting it down, and I <laughs> I, I did this. You grabbed hold. I ran <laughs> to the commode and, what I'm and literally is, elevated. The, the procedure the probably is worse than well whatever oh, you say. All right, so yeah, let me give you a second. So here's here's if that would have been okay. So about about ten o'clock. The cramping stops, and, and instead of being every 10 or 15 minutes, we're now about every 30 minutes. So I'm feeling a little bit better. I, I'm, i am got to sleep. But the problem is at 1 a.m., i got to do it again. And that was the most miserable. Cause so I laid down took a little nap because I thought, I'm up all night. You, you can't sleep when you're doing this. You should have only done it once. I only did it once. I did. Well, now they'd make you do it twice. So, so she but had, look, once you clean it I out, I think maybe clean. I'm 74 and have not had the procedure, but, Al, you just uh, – Reinforced something. Yeah, that it was rough. Once you get to be seventy four, forget that procedure. So I go in there, and I mean, the last time I go, I go when I get there, <clears throat> and she said, "What? What was the last color?" I said, "Oh no, there is no color. It's just water." She said, "Well, that's good." So they look in there, no polyps, a little bit of diverticulitis, which is what mom has. So I guess I'm gonna have that at some point. You know, where they have a little patch on your. Reckon color. that's genetic. Oh yeah, yeah. Everything bad I got from mom. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, but. I will say this. You know, we've we've basically been going through the Book of John, and here we come to Chapter Eleven, and we're in the midst of the coronavirus. That's why we're having these ridiculous conversations about masks and all that. And low brow. Hang on, just let's take a break before we jump in. So, uh, one of our uh, sponsors that's been with us uh, from the very beginning is My Patriot Supply, and I have to say, these guys. You know, going into a pandemic, the idea of having food that would last a long time, and, and for the people that had already bought this makes product, makes a hot, lot more sense. <laughs> I mean, they were like ahead of the curve, you know. Curve. I always said a pandemic, a zombie apocalypse or a pandemic, they're in business, and guess what? So these guys were ahead of the game, uh, and uh, and we've talked about their product from way before the pandemic. Basically, this is a, a, what we have here is a, is a four week supply of food that lasts up to twenty five years, and so you just mix it with water, uh, which is really great. Uh, so uh, go to preparewithfill dot com if you want to check these guys out and go ahead and restock. I'm sure some of you need to. You're going to save a hundred bucks off their most popular kit, which is one we have here. So secure at least four weeks of food at their website, preparewithfill.com. That's preparewithfill.com. And they got pancakes. Yeah. I believe that. I believe God created us to be able to do that. And I think there's a you have a sense of humor with that. Hey, yeah, you said that before. That's always funny. <clears throat> You know, these civilized even when people. you're little, it's, you know so what I'm now, saying? now, guess what? No more cramping in the grocery store for Jake's. But I will say this. In John 11, when, you know, there, here's Lazarus, the first verse, and it says, now, a man named Lazarus was sick. Now, we already know, because we know the end of the story. We know he was a, a believer and a follower. But... I think before we had talked about whether, you know, Christians get sick or, you know, looking for stats on how many, you know, believing people. I mean, I got news for you. Christians get sick and they die. That's right. And <clears throat> he was sick and Jesus didn't, he didn't act like this was like a shock. He said, he, you know, he was from Bethany, the village of Mary, Sister Mar uh, Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick. There it is again. Was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. 
which that happens in the next chapter. Right. Which I believe he was just uh, saying this was a such a known story, you know, as I the I think as it's possible writer. that she was the woman in Luke 7. Yeah, I don't I don't think so. I mean, it, you know, there's a debate, nobody knows for sure, but maybe she was the woman he's referring to that showed up at Simon's house. Well, which in is Luke how 7 just for her, a and I'm, I I guess <clears throat> let me finish my point for we cuz right, I think this is that. a greater point. But all I was going to say was in verse 4 when he heard this, Jesus said, "This sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory." so that God's Son may be glorified through it. And I was just going to make the point. People get sick. That's, and that's not anything shocking. I mean, whether you believe or... There's no this retribution like from, not from John 9. It's not necessarily I did wrong. That's why I'm sick. Yeah, which remember, remember John, John 9. 9. Right. Th- this is... And which is the point I was going to make before we even continue. John 9, there's a man born blind, and they're like, well, whose fault is it? Jesus had every right in the world to support that kind of thinking, that because bad things are happening to you, that means you're bad. You're being you punished. You did something. You're being punished. They call Jesus it karma said, no, now. this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. And then right here, he basically says the about same the same thing. Yeah. Not that he died, but just, okay, he's sick. But guess well, basically, what? Basically, get the point, Jay, is that he delayed for that purpose. Yeah, that's right. Right. He waited he, a couple later more on in the chapter. He says, "Well, I'm glad I wasn't there." He yeah. says that in 14 because Thomas was like, "You know, well, if he's dead, let's go die with him." Which shows you Thomas gets a bad rap because yeah, of being he, doubting top. But he was like, "You know, this if, is it. If this is it, let's here we go." Well, remember that, and he said that because some of the disciples, took, when Jesus said we're going back to Judea, I mean, they're like, "Didn't they just try to kill yeah. you there?" I mean, like. They're thinking, we can't go there, you know, and he's like, oh, yeah, we're going. Oh, and we say all that. Look, this chapter, if you were questioning, if you've been listening to this podcast or you've been thinking just about life in general or your death, if you just needed to read, if you read this chapter, John chapter 11, when you wake up for the next seven days, if you get up and just go to John 11 and you read it, I will guarantee you it will change your behavior and how you think moving forward. Yep. Because it reminds you of what we see. People get sick. Well, I don't you don't have to be reminded of that now. We're all in the paranoid <laughs> the oh, everything that we've been talking fear. About. Some people are just like shaking when they're around yeah, that's correct. Like, oh, you don't have a mask on. Oh, yeah. You know. Oh, and angry. Number. Yeah. And the fear turns to anger. That's and, right. I, I see people look at you. You're not, you know, and it's just like, oh, you sorry piece of trash. You better yeah. get them. I mean, like you can see it in their eyes. But I'm know? like, and and a lot of people, probably the people who would be getting upset that we're having this conversation, are not listening. But there might be one or two. You got to remember, nobody was doing this over the flu, and, and it's just as lethal as, as is my point. Now, granted, we're we're trying. to to do what we can to stop this, but and this thing citizen. is like a roaring inferno. <laughs> you remember the, the only pe- person <clears throat> I know who got it wore a mask all the time and was quarantined. So I mean, you completely. Know. Yeah, except for I'm one. Like, I remember I go to the got bl- it. I go to the blood man to take the blood twice a year. Yep, that's all. You know, every six seven months, I go up there. He said, "Well, we'll take a pint." Or no, you're good, and and then I, then I go on. So the only other time I'm in town for the last six or eight months, mm-hmm. the only time I'm in town is on Sunday mornings with a group of And that's brothers. only been a month. And that's only been a month because right. they shut that down. Right. So well, Phil, you're around me. I was around 200 people. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. So, so we're back to your I'm, beer. I'm as about a, I'm, <laughs> yeah, one of the I'm greatest. bumping into very few people. That's right. But yeah. it doesn't take but one. So that's right. Or Dan picking it up at Sam's. You know, I mean, it's, anything's possible. But I showered before I came out, so you're good. <laughs> yeah. But to Al's point about who this was, I mean, look, this is I I, I I've studied this before because it is confusing. But what you got to remember, what we I think hopefully are different than other people who have Bible discussions, it's really not a big deal who this woman is compared right, to Luke it is 7. 
I personally don't believe it is. Uh, Luke 7, just for people who are not familiar with the Bible off the top of their head, this was a sinful woman, and she wiped Jesus' feet with her tears. Now, she did use some perfume also, but in this case, you know, Mary, she wasn't crying, and they it says down here, uh, somewhere in here, that this was in preparation for his burial. Well, the Luke 7 time frame doesn't, doesn't measure up for me because that's early in the proceedings. But anyway... But that's it, it's po- still possible. That it's ben possible. I, I'm not saying I'm 100. Right, you you. just you're not going to know this beyond a shadow of a doubt because, and I think most scholars do agree though, because I remember looking at this once in a former life that in John 11 he is referring to her in John 12. That I think people do agree on that for the most part. He's just saying like. This is the one, even though he hadn't said she wiped his feet with perfume, in the next chapter it starts off, so it gets weird. A lot of people reading the Bible are like, well, wait a minute. Did that just happen? This is one of those moments. Well, and uh, let's, let's take another break. So we probably didn't know that the average American uh, has 97 points they can add to their credit score, and they really don't know how to get them. So one of our sponsors is a group called ScoreMaster, And so basically, they've come up with a new credit science way to boost your credit score. Uh, You can uh, basically raise your credit. um, You can basically raise your credit score sixty-one points in twenty days or less, which is pretty impressive. So, you guys are out there. You're trying to, you know, start a business. You're trying to buy a boat. You're trying to buy a house. uh, You want to be able to get your credit score up. So. These guys are going to put you in control of your finances, not the bank. So you can roll in minutes, go to scoremaster.com slash fill. That's scoremaster.com slash fill. And find a way to get your credit score up today, uh, 61 points in 20 days or less. Pretty impressive. And that's going to save you some money in the long term on a loan. So check these guys out uh, if you need them and if you're needing to get your credit score up. And that's another thing about it, Jay. Sometimes you get the Gospels are, are four different perspectives of the same thing that went on. And so you know, the timelines are a little sometimes different in oh, one book right. than the and other. And the so. details are different. Right, exactly. And what I was going to make the point is what separates, I hope, our presentation is get the point. I'm not yeah, real concerned it. which one and is who and making all of it fit. Now, in Luke 7, he does make a, a good point where he says there was a Pharisee there. Well, you know, there's no mention of a Pharisee here, but there was a Pharisee, and he asked the Pharisee, you know, those who have been forgiven much love much. Yeah, which is one of my favorite verses yeah. in the Bible. Now, but some old boy sitting out there so well, does that mean I should go out there and do a lot of cutting up so I can be forgiven a lot? And so... No, nope, that means you're an idiot. That's right. But, you know, that's but that's the question how, that was in Romans six. Rome, right, right. Here we go again. But he was just saying she's so thankful because you know the the more evil stuff you do, the more baggage you have, the greater the chances that you're not going to come to Jesus because right. you're probably going to wind up in prison or, or dead. dead. That's what happens to most. Because it just and you know there's another thought in here where Jesus, which is. Nobody knows what it means. I mean, th- this chapter is filled with things that we can't really all agree on. On who is Mary the same one in Luke seven and the where's the other reference like Matthew twenty six I right. think. And the other thing is when you know we've already read that this sickness will not end in death. Jesus said so. It's like in verse five it said Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Yet when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed there. I mean, he stayed where he was two more days. He didn't immediately go. So then he said to Saul, let's go back to Judea. They said, hey, they're going to stone you. So then he makes this comment about, in verse 9, Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight, which was in their world the equivalent of a day? Right. And he says, a man who walks by day will not stumble, for he sees by this world's light. It is when he walks by night that he stumbles, for he has no light. And I just wanted to 
quickly say, you remember in the beginning of our study with John, we said there's three things that are going to continually come up. Jesus is life, he's love, and he's light. And he, he seems to bring those principles up in every circumstance. That's why I think it's the key to the book. Every context, you're right. So then he says this. After he had said this, he went on t- to tell them, our friend Lazarus, I love that he said friend, has fallen asleep. And I'm going there to wake him up. His disciples said, well, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Which tells you, you know, what's the doctor say? I know where you got it. Maybe. <laughs> you know, they always say, drink plenty of liquids and oh, yeah. get some rest. Right. <clears throat> That's biblical. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So what I was going to say is people think, what the heck is this? Why did he refer to it as sleeping? Which I've often thought, if God had not created us to sleep, I'm talking about in this life, I think our life expectancy would be cut in half. Oh, yeah, you got to have it. Because it's the only thing that can stop you. Just think the people outside of Jesus or people who just get involved in something. The only thing that really makes them come to their senses a little bit it's when they just collapse and pass out. That's right. And then they wake up and say, what the heck was I doing? Or when you're sick, you know, you think about it. When you're really sick with something, you got the flu or you got something, mm-hmm. you know, you want to go sleep. I mean, just, you know, the, the body needs that to then begin to repair itself, you know. So you were right. I mean, it was that that idea that they recognize it. But you know, It's pretty amazing <laughs> that you even see the power of sleep in the animal world. Oh, yeah. You know? The, you know, the the, the rankest, the, the, the most ravaging animals you can think of, you say, at times you look over and they're like, <laughs> sleep. <laughs> <laughs> what department in salt water said, we're going to make sure that these, the animal world and the human beings that we're making out here, what department in salt water said, by the way, we'll fix it so they have to sleep to kind of rejuvenate, rejuvenate their body. Yeah. There's just yeah. no way. We There's watch, no way that We watch happen. ducks do that because we'll, you'll be watching them, you know, and they'll have their head They'll just their put wing. their head under their wing, you know, and they're just out, you know, just sleeping it off, you know, mate, it's sitting out there floating on the water, Yep. you know, the whole time they're doing it, which is a bizarre, you just think about that, how bizarre that is. You oh, think, my little dog, you know, I was in South Texas with Jeff and Missy, so, but she's, self-contained you know we have a little doggy door she's got her food and water but when she saw me she was so excited because you know she's been by herself for four or five days i mean she had plenty of food and water so she ran through the house i videoed her you know and showed it to miss him and they like just just crazy so she's still gonna stay here is, yeah she's is that the plan i mean okay. well she doesn't travel speaking of upset stomach she doesn't oh. travel well Ooh. so she has to stay here but we have another dog in South Texas, because Missy's grandma, who who passed away from coronavirus. the effects of the coronavirus, she had a little dog, and she, I guess, wrote down that she wanted us to have it. I guess she liked the way we treat our dogs, and so now it's kind of sentimental. We yeah. have we have her little dog. So it's kind of a reminder of her. Them together, <laughs> right, you know? right, right. But anyway, what I was gonna say, my my little dog Hazel was so worn out, she just got up on the couch with me right beside me and slept, you know. Well, I was I was actually studying my Bible. And uh, she was so asleep, she was stretched out. And I just heard, whoop, whoop, whoop. and she she had just, you know, passed out and fell off the couch. <laughs> but she looked around, and she was just staggered. And I was like, I thought, oh, no, she broke her back, you know. Yeah. No, she was just so out of it. Fell asleep. She was exhausted. An interesting point that I saw that last night. I thought, man, that dog was like in the third dimension of sleep. Rolled off the couch and didn't even realize it. So let's uh, take one last break, and then Dad's got some thoughts on this idea of falling asleep. Well, to set Phil up, so you you got one of three is well three. You got many. Was Jesus being sarcastic? Was he just relating it as to time? Because, you know, when you sleep, time stops. Or did he have some some other thought of when he said, we're going to go there and wake him up? Or was he just joking, you know? Well, so my little section is this. Now, you had one guy 
who was standing there, Peter. So we'll start with him. Now, when Peter, when he was discussing, when he was discussing uh, his, his death, which the Apostle Paul said, we don't want you to be ignorant of those who fall asleep or grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. Right. So he attributed it to physical death as falling asleep. Peter says this. He told them, he reminded them, you know, of the things they ought to add to their faith. And he says, so I'll always remind you of these things, even though you know them and are firmly established in the truth you now have. I think it's right to refresh your memory. Now, listen to the wordage. As long as I live in the tent of this body, because I know that I will soon put it aside. He's going to fall asleep. His body is. Not him. His body. I want to refresh your memory. As long as I live in the tent of this body, which means he's not going to be there forever. Because what? Because I know that I will soon put it aside, the tent, as our Lord Jesus Christ has made it clear to me. The last few verses of John, Jesus told him, he said, Peter, you, when you were young, you, you, you dressed yourself and went the way you wanted to go. But when you get old, there's somebody else going to dress you, and they're going to take you where you don't want to go. Right. By this, Jesus meant the kind of death Peter would undergo to glorify God. So I will make every effort to see that, now listen to the wordage, after my departure, he's saying I'm going to leave my tent, the body, the body is going to fall asleep, which is physical death, but he is already departed. He said, you'll always be able to remember these things. Now, that's Peter. That's uh, 2 Peter 1, 12. 2 Peter 1, 12. 15, yeah. Well, you got the Apostle Paul. When he describes his view of physical death as being asleep, he says, you're going, to be at two, you're going to be at two places. One is on the earth in your tent, and one in heaven without your tent. So here's the way he says it. Phil, you love this verse, so you read this often. Is it I, I, That's five? why everybody needs to be reminded of this on a consistent basis. They need to be reminded of these texts. Now watch. We know that if the earthly tent, well, Peter said, as long as I'm in this tent, I just thought I might ought to mention something to y'all. Well, Peter, uh, the Apostle Paul uses the same terminology. Now we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, if you die, we have a building, another body, from God, an eternal house. There'll be an eternal house, another body. It's an eternal house in heaven. It's not built by human hands. Meanwhile, we groan. You say, why would we groan as long as we're in this tent? Because we don't want to be separated from our body. We don't want to leave our tent because it's a little bit uh, out of whack. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling, our new body, because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. When you're, you are body, soul, and spirit, when your body dies or falls asleep. You got to remember, Jesus is fixing to say, whoever believes in me, even if he dies yet, shall he live? And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. You just leave your tent. Now, it's hell on one side and heaven on the other. While we're in this tent, now right now, I have a tent. My back, I, I pulled a muscle in my back the other day. So you say you got a backache. As long as we're in this tent, we groan. We don't want to leave our body out because it's a little awkward. That's right. When you have to leave. It's all we've ever known. It's all we've ever known. <laughs> and all, all and all of a sudden, we got to let it go <laughs> and, and, and just rock on. You're like, I, I don't like that separation thing. So watch. While we're in this tent, we groan and are burdened because we do not wish to be unclothed. When your soul and your spirit is all you have, those are invisible. 
you can't see them, Al. Right. You only can, I, I see you coming because you're in a tent that I can recognize. Correct. When you leave that, I won't be able to communicate with That's you. That's right. It's awkward. Yeah. So, but we want to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling so that what is mortal, that's the, why we're in the tent here, that's mortal. It's going to stop. You're going to fall asleep. Your body, your soul and spirit live on. And if you're a Christian, it lives on forever and you're good to go. You just don't have your body for a short period of time. When Jesus comes back, he's getting the bodies. But anyway, now it is God who has made us for this very purpose. It's, it's the way he wanted it. Watch. And he's given us the spirit, which is critical. You have to receive God's spirit by having your faith in Jesus Christ, being born again of water and the spirit. Guaranteeing what's to come. So watch this. Therefore, we're always confident. Know that as long as we're at home in the body, the tent, the temporary tent, we're away from the Lord. That's the downside yep. of living right now. The, all three of us right now, we're in our, we're in our temporary tents. We uh, know we're going to be separated, separated from it. You say, hmm. <clears throat> but the bummer is we know we're away from God as long as we're in the tent. We live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body. You're better off when you leave this tent for one reason, if you're a faithful Christian, because you know you made it. Right. You know you made it. Right. Because watch, as long as we're at home, look, I say and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal, check this out, to please him, God, whether we're at home in the body, which is right now where we are, or away from it. Your, our soul and spirit is with the Lord and our body is in the cemetery. It's asleep, but we're still alive. We just don't have our body. Yeah. Jesus comes back. He's going to raise the dead. You say, well, what's the only thing that could rise? I know, we're, I know we're out of time. So look, the, the key point was what you just read, we're going to read next time. He goes over there and literally woke him up. That's it. And he got his body back. That's it. And if you're looking for a theme. You know, where was Lazarus theme, when he was had him when his body was That in would that be tomb. the question I would want to ask Lazarus. If you're looking for a theme, though, right in the middle of this, you know, we just read John 10, last few podcasts, and he said, I'm the good shepherd. I'm the gate for the sheep. Uh, and here he makes this statement in 1425, I am the resurrection and the life. Yep. In 14, he's going to say, I am the way, the truth. In the life. If you're looking for a theme, Jesus' nickname or what he represents is I am. That's right. And that's why we put our faith and trust in him. That's why we focus on him. And when it comes to sickness and in death, I would go with the man who says, I am. <laughs> for to me, the Apostle Paul said, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Right. You say, how could you make that statement at your physical death? He said, it's just a departure from your tent. Because You'll get a new I one. You'll get a new one up. when Jesus shows back up. You'll get a new, this time not a tent. It's it, 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 that, that'd be eternal house. That's right. Eternal house. You're like, good night. All right. Pretty so exciting. Next time we're going to pick it up right here because there's some more good stuff to flesh out. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube and be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.